All right, welcome. It's after Labor Day. Today it is naughty or nice. Who's naughty and who's nice? We're going to find that out. So a few things, housekeeping, that we're going to start out with first. Uh, some signed items today. That's why I got my sign pen in the hand, signing pen in my hand. There's going to be quite a few items. I'll show you which ones they are. I'll tell you as we go through them um, that I will be signing certain pieces that is at the marketplace only. So when you go to the marketplace, the Mark Roberts marketplace, that's where you can get some of the pieces that will be signed. We have a special guest today. You saw it in the introduction, in the opening sequence. Mary Engelbright, the Mary Engelbright. I uh, did a great interview with her earlier today. It's going to be really fun. I can't wait to share that with you. It's really pretty interesting. We're going to still do a quick Q&A at the end. And at, then at the very end, we're going to do a tell me something you don't already know. And I'm going to need your input for that. So I'm going to need your comments. I'm going to be asking for your comments about that. So I won't tell you that until the end. So let's kind of get going with that. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the Nutcracker Dream Fairy. I'm going to put my papers down because this is one of the pieces that will be signed. So, so that we know what I'm doing generally, if you've never gotten a signed piece, generally I sign them on the hands like so. And... There it is. Can we see that? There we go. I spelled it right. Okay. So be on the hands, including the small ones. Both sizes are available to be signed today. So, Nutcracker Dream Fairy. What I love about this is the colors, is the blue. I think you guys know I love blue. I think blue is a great fashion color. I think it's great in the home year-round. It's good on clothing. And of course, it's great with Christmas. It really stands out. We've got this great nutcracker with this very rich royal blue uh, shirt going on there. Because and then look how gorgeous the jewels! How they just jump out on that. And I love then the ruby red jewel across his belt there. Great colors. The reds pick up the reds here. Great, great detail. Ah, the blue is really sharp. And then that crisp white and gold or cream and gold pants with a harlequin pattern with the gold glitter going on and it's hard to see his his boots but there's let me move a few ornaments there uh, great detail going on on there in the boots and there are lots of sparkles and lots of magic going on then as we go up we're going to work our way up to his hat and we skip past all this gorgeous blue again and then we come into a sparkling blue hat with i love this ruby jewel it just really the light dances off of it and really looks spectacular. So he's a true Nutcracker, Nutcracker fairy. He's always been a uh, timeless piece that I do every year, a version of it. The Nutcracker Ballet, of course, is really popular. We love Nutcrackers. We're all Christmas crazy, so we love Nutcrackers. He's got his uh, jeweled buttons there for his lapel. I mean, just a great piece. So there's two sizes that we're sure are available, that are available to be signed. And that's the little guy right there. I'll sign his hand also. And the larger one, which we just saw here, and this is actually, this is actually, the two sizes you're seeing are the small and the large, not the medium. The medium one we don't have available. Some of the stores may have the medium still available, but it's the large and the small that are available on the marketplace to be signed. This is a great way to take a wreath. Zhang took this wreath, and he actually made the whole thing. He put wire and foam and made the form and then put the pine and everything in it. But what a great way to show a wreath as a, essentially as a centerpiece. And you've got it standing up. He's got it standing up and in a base, in a form, um, which just takes some wire and some, you know, creativity. And putting some branches and other things in it and lots of ornaments going on here. What I like with this, the blues, is there's teals and turquoise, mostly teals. Teals and gold and platinum 
that work so nicely with that royal blue. What you end up with is not a matchy-matchy of blues, but a complement or a harmony, a color harmony, where you've got blues and teals and greens of the pine. You create a really nice color harmony that then is accented with the platinums and the golds and the silvers and the sparkles. Really magical. So think about that when you're doing your own designs at home. Think about color harmonies. We can match colors sometimes, but we can harmonize colors also sometimes, where we don't have to put everything perfectly matched together. Let's capitalize on the fact that we can't always match everything perfectly. So really fun, fun pieces here. Nutcracker pieces are always timeless. I always have a Nutcracker piece out at home somewhere. And I, I love Nutcrackers and collect them, among other things. So um, and we'll move on and see some other cool pieces. But great, great way to show this with you know, the li different little things that are left over from other parts. And it just comes together really nicely. So that's called the Nutcracker Dream Fairy. This one is signed. Once again, it is only signed at the marketplace right along there. I got it. And uh, let's go do the next one. The next one is going to be the Christmas List Fairy. So I'm going to like, dance around here and flip around and come back to here and talk about the Christmas List Fairy. And what, there we go, we got all sorts of lights in the camera right now. What the Christmas List Fairy is, is kind of like the namesake for this show because it really comes down to who's on the naughty list and who's on the nice list. And that's what this guy has here is a list and it has says shopping and cookies and wrapping presents and everything. But you know also that there's a list that says naughty or nice. So this is the Christmas list fairy. What I love about him is the green colors in his pants because it's a very uh, sparkly sage green. And it just jumps against the rich red velvet coat that you're seeing there. And of course the very sweet list, the medium size and the larger size has the feathered pen, which is cool, in his hand. He's got the metal, like a quill pen going on there. And the smaller one has just the list in his hand. But we all make lists at Christmas time. We've got lists for shopping and baking and who's been naughty and who's been nice. So uh, again, another fun way to stick your fairy into a wreath. It animates your wreath. You take a wreath and you can have a beautiful wreath, but when you put the fairy or elf in it, it just animates it. It brings it to life. You can see that there's, there's a story going on there. And I think that's one of the things that I like about them. And I know you guys like it also, is you create stories. You create the animation. You create the movement that's going on and a substantial amount of interest. And I'm sure when family and friends come over, that's one of the things that they're asking about. So I know for my place when that happens, when people come over and uh, they're usually intrigued by that and going up and you know, their eyes are going right into it. What is that? Oh, that's so neat. I love that. And can I touch it? Is, oh, is it, you know, I say, pick it up. Don't worry. It's not going to, I don't want to break it. You're not going to break it. Don't worry. So, but that's, I love the interest that people get and they get excited about all that stuff and they see all those things. Tell them, you know, go ahead, bend the wings. They're fluff, they're, they're flexible, they're poseable. Don't worry about bending them. So very, very beautiful piece. Another great detail, can we go in, Jong, right on the very center on his buckle in here? Because his kind of belt buckle there has got all sorts of stuff going on. He's got gold ribbons, silver leaves, ruby jewels, ruby berries, gold jewels. There's just like all sorts of stuff, pine and holly, all sorts of great stuff going on in there. So pretty. There's so much going on. It's just really detailed out. And then I'm going to go right up. John's doing it right there. I love on the top of his hat. He's got that bell on the top of his hat. And his hat is sewn like this. It's sewn like a stocking almost. So you get that shape of the stocking, and it, it's sewn forward, so it always is going to hang, that bell is going to always hang forward. And then he's got a lot of great detail on his hat as well. So great, great piece. Love, love the Christmas list fairy. The little guy has a girlfriend, and her name is the Diamonds and Jewels Fairy, and she is just precious. 
I mean, just precious. So she's, I'm only showing you the small one here. I don't know why we're not showing the larger one. We maybe have sold out of it. I don't know. I know things are going fast. So, um, but she is so precious. She's got that super sweet face. She's got this really sweet dress, the soft layers of like chiffons going on, and then a, a embroidered millinery lace overlay on top of her velvet um, blouse up there. Really, really, really pretty. And then these tails uh, on her, look at this, the green that goes on here is really pretty. And this green, well, it's not the same fabric as her little boyfriend I just told you about, but it goes with it beautifully. So I love that going on in her. That's actually part of like a bow. Can I flip her around? I think I can. I'm going to make mess up the display. But the back of her, she has got, in addition to her wings, she's got all these little, this fabulous bow, which is three layers of fabrics. There's a sheer, a sheer with sparkling stars, and then this gorgeous green. I mean, I love that green. Really, really pretty. So now I've got to get her back in this display somehow, like, like it never happened, and put this ornament back in her hand. Do you remember these ornaments? Some of you got these ornaments before when we showed them these iridescent teardrops. And now I have, let's see if I can get that in there. Come on, come on, this is live, so we're trying to get that back. I like the scale. I love the scale of the larger ornaments in the fairies' hands because we talk about the fairies, you know, they're kind of magical. And they fly, they've got these wings, and so they can hold on to an ornament that is largest, as large as them because they can. That's why. And I love this iridescent ornament. This is like, I think the box is a 12, and I want to say it's like 59 or $60 or something. It's going to be coming up later in the show, so you'll see it, um, the ornaments. But she's so pretty with the ornament, whether it's this ornament or another ornament. I like this because it looks like a bubble, almost like a, uh, you know, when you blow bubbles when you're kids with the, you know, the bubble stuff, whatever it is. So it's, it's naturally light. So... Anyways, she's a very, very fun piece. She's the diamond, Diamonds and Jewels Fairy, and she's got diamond necklace. She's got a diamond-like jewels in her hair. She's got emerald jewels on her belt there. Can we get in closer? There we go, the other, the other closer. See how much, can we see some of those jewels? So you can see what's on her hat there is cool. And then this little emerald jewel on her belt there and her diamond-like necklace. I mean, really pretty. Uh, same thing with her wrist. She's got some stuff going on there. So she's got lots of diamonds, lots of jewels, and uh, she's ready for Christmas this year. So one of my favorites of these little girls. Then we're going to go on to the Candy Dandy Santa. And guess what? That is one that is signed. So I'm going to just stick my papers right here for a minute. I'm going to grab this guy and put him right over here. And before I go too far, so that I don't forget and that I've reminded you clearly, this is a signed piece. Let's see if I can do this without. It's going to be signed on the hand. And that particular hand, this extra ornament, this is a. Where is it at? There it is. This is a Mary, Mary Inglebright dinner ornament. So we're going to be talking about these uh, in a little bit. This is, I like the Candy Dandy Santa. I put this, put this ornament on the Candy Dandy Santa because it's got the peppermint detail going on around the side. So it's already got candy d details going on on it. Candy Dandy is pretty dandy. He's got, why is he Candy Dandy? Because he's got gumdrops on his... Uh, festoon here on his shirt. He's got a uh, peppermint tree inside a glass dome there, which is just like ready to eat for all us sweet lovers. He's got gumdrops and chocolate in his hat. What else has he got? He's got a gingerbread cookie in his hat. I'm hungry. I'm already hungry. Gingerbread cookie in his hat, gumdrops in his hat. Um, lots of sweet details going on here. And then look at the detail, the, the black and white stripes. Love this green velvet with the gold stars for his coat. And then look at the different layers of 
uh, laces and ruffles and jewels as it's going on there, really, really pretty. Set, set off, you can see the, the uh, ruffled fur down there on his boots, gold bows. He does come on, I'm going to leave this real quickly, comes on this wooden base. It's hard to see because I've got him on another wooden base. And then I'm just going to spin him around. Let's just look at the backside of him. And then we're going to come back and look at his hat in a minute. But as we spin him around, I love this detail here, the red and white, or excuse me, the black and white stripes just come right through. You see that with the check up here. But let's stop for a second and look at this great lace around his neck. There are a couple layers of this lace, really, really pretty collar or lace there. And perfect for a chef. And then why is he a chef? Because look at this great hat. He's like, he's got this like chef hat with the Harlequin black and white pattern at where it fits his hat and then the chef part here. But that wasn't enough. We needed to add some more fun to it. So we added a black and white stripe and then just curled this part of the hat. It's all wired so you can shape it any way you wish and just make it fun and festive. You could let it go long if you want. You could you can do all different things with it. Here's how you do it. First of all, you could do something like that and just let it be simple. But it's just fun to even just to wrap it around a couple fingers, curl it up, pull it out. That's the blessing of it, the good thing. You can do different things with it and then put it so that you can see it there. So great, great piece. Candy Dandy Santa. There's not a lot of these left. He's signed when you get him at the marketplace right here. Um, the last few pieces, there will not be that many, so get them today. If you really like this guy, get him today. Then we're going to talk about another Santa that is in a balloon here. So it's almost reminiscent of, for me, the Wizard of Oz. And this guy, the balloon is separate. We just call him Santa in the hot air balloon. And, but he's got also this beautiful black and white Harlequin check pattern. And he's actually just sitting inside, he comes in and out, he's sitting inside the basket of it. He's got a big Merry Christmas sign, which of course has got to have to have some berries and jewels and some fun tinsel going on on it. Look at the detail on his plaid shirt. I love that. Love the plaid and then this very rich green going on on his bow, buckle, belt, whatever we want to call it. Then there's like a velvet button with like diamonds around it. I mean, very, very cool. So that was a fun little find, finding those little buttons. We ended up using those buttons on Nutcrackers, on Santas, and I think a few other things, but they were fun. We found them in lots of different colors and we're really happy with those. Great piece here. And then on the top, the balloon. It's actually a balloon. It's uh, fiberglass. The balloon just lifts right out, sets right in there, and then we've got some gorgeous detail going on color right here. We've got blues. Imagine that blue. Blues, greens, reds, black and white ribbon, red ribbon, gold ribbon. Nice layering of ribbons just to make it festooned and festive. Um, and then some red tinsel going on in here. But what a great piece. I want to flip him around to the back and see the back of his coat because what I want to show you is all the jeweling that goes on. I don't think you find on any Santas anywhere all the different trimmings and jewelings that we provide for you. It's fun to do. It's always a challenge because getting the right composition, getting the right elements together that work together, it's, while we make it look easy, it is a challenge sometimes, but it's fun to pull the pieces together. We have so many different choices to work from, but I love how this um, jeweled gold and diamond-like beading goes around the whole completeness of his cape. And then this fur is like a sculpted fur. It's pretty wonderful. It's very wonderful, actually. So great, great piece to have here. Santa in the hot air balloon. And guess what? I got to be paying attention. This guy is signed. So. Brian's going to, is putting up on the screen for you when they're signed, and I'm going to try to do this with each one so that I remind you at the same time. Generally, you'll know where they're signed at also at the same time. 
Okay, so then we're going to go and we're going to talk about another Santa. And then we're going to talk about some fairies and some joy. And then we're going to be talking to Mary, Mary Inglebright. So the Santa I want to talk to you about is called Santa's Stocking. And I'm going to take this down, I think, so that we can see it better. Push this chair a little bit in the back going on here. I love Santa's stocking. Guess why? As we zoom in closer, you're going to know the answer why. And it looks fantastic. It's the blue. I love this blue, this rich blue going on on here. He's very, very traditional. Reds, reds, golds, greens, red, green, and gold. It's very traditional Christmas. And yet here we have here gorgeous primary color in his blue on his shirt. And it just really stands out really quite well. So we're getting positioned there. While we're, while we're doing that, I'm going to flip it on the side for a minute, John, and lift this up here. But look at this detail here while we're bouncing around. You've got, again, the black and white Harlequin. I love that black and white fabric. That's actually a different fabric, but it's similar. And then all these big bells with the bows and the hollies going on on them. Great detail on the side. You know, that's, you're only seeing part of it, actually. So it's, it's how you fluff it that you want to be able to show off that part. But it really is magical. You can bring the, the coat back a little bit to show off more of that magic there. He's going to have a glass ornament in his hand. How pretty is that? He has got going up on his shirt here. I'm going to pull his beard aside a little bit because what makes this blue so wonderful is how the red velvet just jumps out on it. And that's really our palette to put the festoon that he has of bells and bows and hollies and berries and stuff. There's multiple reds going on in there. But that red just jumps against the blue there. And if we pull back just a tad, you're perfect. There's also a red trim on the outside, which frames out the blue so nicely. So you've got the red background with the gold. Again, lots of great detail. You've got one trim, a second trim, a third trim. There's a lot of trims going on just on this part of his shirt. So there's a lot of detail. You've got a shirt with two fabrics, three trims, a big festooned bow, bow tie going on up there. And then look at this magic. I mean, wow, is that too pretty or what? You've got a big gold bell, lots of red berries or balls, gold ribbons, and then the hat. Look how the hat ties together the same blue Harlequin fabric. And then we pick up the black and white Harlequin fabric. We've got a red pattern fabric going on here and then the green. So we picked up the fabrics that are on his pants, both here and on the side. We've tied that all together real nicely. And then this lining of his coat here, that's also in his hat. And so we've tied that all together real nicely in a very planned way so that there's a, very, there's a, there's a reason for the composition to be what it is. So love this piece. This is probably one of my favorite Santas this year. Um, what can I say? Santa stocking. He's got the ornament with the stocking ornament in his hand. And I just hope that Santa's good to me this year and you and put something nice in our stockings. Very pretty guy. Really great piece. OK, next one we're going to go to is, while we're talking stockings, is the stocking fairy. We're going to talk about that and also the joy piece that is on the mantle. We'll do those together and I'll show you why together. But the stocking fairy, I'm going to take him out of here for a minute. And how pretty is he with this? Again, I'm using a lot of black and white. This has really been popular. And so I'm showing black and white a lot today also because Mary Engelbright uses a lot of black and white in a lot of her artwork. Do I have one here? I don't have one that I can grab. But uses a lot of it in her artwork. And so it's one of the reasons why these ornaments work so well together, her ornaments with my pieces. But the stocking fairy is pretty because he's got little nutcracker ornament. I think we talked about nutcrackers earlier. Great for stocking stuffers. And that's what this guy is doing. He's getting ready to help stuff a stocking. He's got musical instruments. He's got jewels. He's got all sorts of stuff that's going to help Santa to 
stuff the stockings. That's why he's called the stocking stuffing fairy, right? So cool to do on this joy, whether it is this size, but how fun is this? Because this joy piece is great on the mantle. It's just great to put on the mantle. And look how fun is that to just have him sitting right on top of there. Let's see if he listens to us, though. Okay, great. Stay and don't move, please. The larger stocking stuffing fairy has this big stocking in his hand. The stocking has the drum. I love these little red berries, little beaded red berries. He's got a drum, a very sweet little teddy bear off to the side. You see that right back there? There he is. Looks like almost there he is, a little teddy bear and a big candy cane. So very, very fun piece. The larger piece is great to fly, to put on the mantle. Can we pull back and see the whole nutcracker, or the whole uh, fairy? There we go. Look how pretty he is. A little bit more. How great is he on top of a mantle, or in this case, he's coming off of the branches. But how magical is that? Or in the tree, or there's a chandelier behind him. Imagine it hanging off of a chandelier. Fun places to put him. The larger sizes, I believe this is the medium size we're showing here. Uh, maybe it's the large. It's the medium. Okay, it's the medium. So the medium and the large are similar. The larges are obviously a little larger. But either of those sizes are great, again, for scale. Don't be afraid of the larger pieces. If you want the larger piece to show it off, don't be afraid of it. It will look fine on there. You know, we're gonna, you're going to be getting a catalog from us hopefully soon when we finally receive them. And this is on the front cover, is this Joy. And actually, this guy is on there also. And you'll see him sitting right here on the Y, on the front of that catalog. And the larger scale piece looks great on there. So remember this, and then remember the larger piece when you see it on the catalog, how nice even the larger scale pieces look on them. What I love about the Joy is it's great for the mantle. It's great for the kitchen. It's great for a child's room because we've got the playful, playfulness of the stocking, the rocking horse, the teddy bear. That looks like a teddy bear girl to me, actually, but, you know, boy or girl, regardless. Um, but this is a resin piece. They're about 9 or 10 inches tall. Um, they're three separate pieces, but obviously um, you got to put them all together. And really pretty pieces. Just, it's going to be a great, imagine it, you can mix some little pine around it or some cedar. I like cedar because of the fragrance of cedar. Um, or mixing cedar and pine together in fresh, because they'll last the season once you're in the season. So, but the Joy is a great piece to go on the mantle. Or, or you know, you could actually, why couldn't you work that into the tree? It would be fun to put in the tree. You'd have to wire it in, and you're going to have the Joy kind of rolling around in the tree. It'll be a focal. It'll be a focal point of your tree. And again, it makes it a little bit more interesting and creative. And we've got to do more of the why not, why not try that? Let's try something different and do something that's fun. So I love seeing that the fairy flying above it. It's really pretty. When you have your fairies flying, they are magical. I mean, there's nothing less than magical about it. Or maybe what I should say is joyful. Would that be the right word to say today is joyful? So, but it, yeah, they are joyful. So, love that fairy flying above the mantle there. Great, great. I think that's what I'm going to do with mine. I was thinking he was going to sit, but I'm thinking he's going to fly now because I love how he's flying like that. He's just coming in at a great angle, and Zhang posed him really, really nicely. All right, we are going to go now to some stocking holders that are right in front of me on the table here. And there they are, right there. There's a Santa Claus and a reindeer. And that is the set of two going on there. Very nice. And it's Santa with some, a wreath, some presents, and a very, very, very sweet deer going on there. And love the detail, the gold, uh, like acanthus leaves along the bottom of the two of them. And I like that you got a red one, red base, and a green base. And they're heavy enough so that you can hold a stocking in there. And we'll 
hold up pretty good there. So stocking holders are great. You know, they're trying to find different stocking holders is always a challenge. So I love these because just very, very sweet. Look at the holly above that deer's ear there with his golden antlers. I mean, that's really pretty. That's a very, very sweet, very timeless, very vintage, classic looking deer. And Santa's just as sweet as can be. He's got his wreath. He's winking at us. Go figure. So is he naughty or is he nice? I'm thinking he's naughty at this point. Who knows? But good for him. Then we're going to have the naughty elf that we're going to talk about. And there are two of them here. And they're, one of them is reading one of Mary Englebright's books. And the rest are just having fun. So let me tell you about them each. I'll come over here and we're going to look at these guys here. This one here. Okay, I'm going to put this guy back up. Look like they're standing together, but they're actually a little bit apart. Okay, I'm going to put this guy back up. Okay, so we've got the African-American naughty, is it naughty or nice? What's his name? Naughty Elf. He's not even naughty or nice. He's just naughty. And the reason is his little sign that says on the naughty list. So all of these have that on the naughty list. That is the... I mean, he's on the naughty list, so that means I get one of these for sure. Fun piece about him. I'm going to actually, John, pick him up and, will I take him off or, let's see. I'm going to pick him up. We have him connected here, so I'm going to pick him up a little bit and show him off here because there's a lot of great detail going on. Harlequin pattern, again, the diamond pattern with the, the red velvet with the gold and then this green ruffled satin. I mean, really, really pretty. Added the Mary Englebright ornament to it. The Mary Englebright ornaments, by the way, the Mark, Ro Mark Roberts, I made them. But Mary, Mary did all the artwork on them. And um, she asked me to have uh, my ornament factory produce them. So that's what happened there. So he's holding this, this ornament, which is, says Merry Christmas on here, and is very sweet. But love him for his colors, his design, his silver detail going on in his boots. There it is there. And the uh, um, grosgrain ribbon that's going on there is so pretty. And just really pretty. Let's look at his hat then next. I'm going to set him down so we'll time it right there. That green is really good. It's an olive-like green hat that's sculpted. Very, very pretty. And this one is African-American. Comes in two sizes. Both of them have the on the naughty list sign. So they've both been naughty. And then here is the other on the naughty list elf winking at us. This one's winking. Is this one winking? To check out all these different things. That one's not winking. He's a different guy. This one's winking at us. So he's definitely on the naughty list also. He's got his sign there. And same details on the clothing. But what I didn't show you, so I will on this one, I'm going to turn it around because I want to see how great the back is here. And look at this trim. Look at how it just rolls along, up and down, up and down, very flowing, very floral-like. Um, and it just really bridges these nice contrasts of the red and the green. And you've got the rich velvet, which absorbs the light, and then the shiny green, which reflects it, and then the flowing gold and diamond-like trimming, which also reflects it and just highlights it really all, highlights it so nicely. All right. So I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. Jong's going to back up the camera now. And he's going to keep backing up the camera. There he goes. Now he can see me. All right. Now you guys can see me. So earlier today, I talked with Mary Englebright. And we did a great interview, and I want to share that with you with the collections that we did for this year, which is a encore performance, actually, because I've worked with Mary in the past. But let's go right to that interview, and we can talk, you can talk and see her yourself and see the questions I asked her, and let's see how that goes. So without further ado, 
let's go to Mary. Well, we have got this special guest. Here she is, straight from St. Louis, Mary Engelbright. Mary, it is so good to see your face again. How are you Thanks, doing? Mark. I'm fine. You're Thanks. Looking good. It's good to see you. You're looking good. Thank you. We both are feeling good. So that's great. Yeah. So yeah. We have lots of uh, fans. I do that. Uh, many of them are also Mary Engelbright fans uh, and vice versa. And I wanted to talk to people today about, you know, these really fun and we'll put it up on the screen, but these really fun ornaments that we did for you with your artwork and your designs and just wanted to talk about them further and also let people get to know you a little bit better. So that sounds uh, good. You know, I think you started, if, I, if I'm correct, you started out in the New York gift show um, a while back as an oh. illustrator or something. Right, a <laughs> while back. Yeah, we went to the gift show with just, I think, um, maybe 12 or 15 cards in our booth. But, um, it, they took off. They took off right away. So it was great. You, you've had a huge following really ever since. Um, what do you attribute that to? Uh, my charming personality, I guess. I don't, I don't, the cards seem to really speak to people. You know, a lot of people tell us they, they buy one to give to a friend. They buy the other, another one to keep um, because they, you know, I try to illustrate things that happen to everybody every day sure. and um so i think people recognize themselves and their friends in the drawings and um i think that's why they're uh, popular good, good insight for me to know that so what yeah. fascinated me more than anything else is when we first started talking about this about a year ago is how quickly you came up with new artwork so how do you do that so fast how do you do such great detailed drawings so charming so fast oh thanks i um I love to draw. I just, I love to draw and I like to uh, stay busy. I like to always be making something. And um, I just like to, I like to do it. And um, if somebody gives me a project, you know, like when we decided to do this kind of ornament, um, these little pillow ornaments, it just kind of opens up my mind right away to what kind of designs would look good on those. And I'm excited to get to it. And, and I work pretty fast. I mean, I've been doing it for, I hate to say how long. So I'm, you know, I'm fast. I'm so just you, used to you doing it. Best, you made the best of the pandemic and the lockdown by just staying busy. That's great. That's great inspiration for all of us. Right. Yeah. No, I got a lot done. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exciting. So one of the things that you're famous for uh, are all the insightful and yes, cute sayings that are incorporated into your art. I always, I notice that you always credit the sources, which speaks to the, your own integrity as a person, which is great. Um, but this inquiring mind wants to know, how do you find so many great and inspiring inspirational sayings? Well, you know, that is part of the process and it's one, it's a very relaxing part of the process. I do it at the beginning, like before I'm going to do a calendar or a book or um, whatever. I'll take a night and get my, well, and of course now it's so easy with Google um, and, you know, start looking up quotes and lots of times one leads to another too. You find a great quote and then underneath that is on the internet, especially, you know, there'll be a bunch more quotes and that is very relaxing for me and um, really inspiring. So that's just, uh, I consider that part of the work, a one night devoted to that, to getting all the quotes for that project. Nice. Yeah. So all of these beautiful ornaments, there seems to be a story, a story behind all of them. I love this, this one here, the uh, perfect Christmas tree ornament. And they're, they're so sweet to go together with, I'm gonna put them in his hand, uh, to go on the Santas that I do as, you know, when we did these previously. But right. I, guess, I guess I'm gonna to have to raise him up here and Brian can show a full picture of him in a minute. But, you know, tell us, you know, what's the, what's the story, you know, what, what are some of the stories behind, what, what inspired you with each of these ornaments? Well, I actually thought, um, and, and this is from my childhood, I loved unpacking the ornaments with my mother yeah. to um, 
do the tree. Um, and each ornament, you know, it was a family ornament and had some kind of memory or some kind of story behind it. So when I was designing these, I was thinking of the um, kids who would be looking at them as they hung them on the tree, decorated the tree or unpacked them. And I wanted each one to have a little, um, a picture that a, a child could look at and make up their own little story about it, you know, and maybe pick their favorite and be excited every year to get that ornament out of the box. So that's always in the back of my head when I'm designing. That's fascinating that so many different artworks, so many different pieces come to life. Um, it's just fun to hear for me to hear from the artist who I'm fortunate and lucky to know in person, um, you know, the inspiration, because all the times that we talk and have been together, we don't talk about mm -hmm. these things. We're talking about other right. things, you know, other, right. how we gonna, the logistics of putting something together or all of those, all of those other things that are not as much fun um, right. as the creative process. And so we rarely share our, each of our creative processes with each other. That's actually part of the live, the Facebook lives that I've been doing is to help share that creative process with my fans, my collectors. Uh, yeah, and I, think I think people are, sure like. people are really interested in that. I think they want to know that personal side of the design. You know, well, I, I have always been a fan of your work. So I, I, I can remember the moment that we met in person for the first time, which was in my Atlanta showroom. We had a lot of fun. So, oh, yeah. definitely. so yeah. it was a good time. So we're looking to looking to have a good time with these, you know, going forward and do some different stuff with them. Um, but they're yeah. only available at, to the best of my knowledge, your we website, maryinglebright.com, uh, right. on the uh, seasonal or Christmas uh, section uh, for these ornaments. Right, that's the only place you're gonna be able to get them. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, not gonna be in stores, they're just here. So. Yeah, and there's quite a bit of stuff. You sent me all these great little things, these great books, the Christmas cards. I got all sorts of stuff. I love this book that you have, the big book of Santa. I've not seen this one before. Yeah, that one's pretty new and it's very popular. It's everyone, well, not now, now I have more, but at the time it was every Santa that I had ever drawn. Is really? In that, is in that book, uh-huh, yeah. And it's, uh, I think it's a good gift. You know, people, we um, get people ordering three and four and five at a time. So we assume that they're giving them as gifts. I, I yeah. can see why, I can see why. The, the most famous one that I think, I th at least me, that I think you are most famous for is the uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas that you did the illustrations for. Right. Um, what a great book this is. So I think I have one, I think I have one signed down in my office, which is like a library also with 500. I'm sure you do. Yeah, so, I'm sure I signed one for you. I, I believe so. That was great when you did that. And so yeah. do, did I understand correctly uh, when people order them today or this week or whatever that time frame is that they're going to be signed? I believe it's today. Um, I will sign the ornament for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. That's exciting. Uh, I been to we've done signings together uh we've done right. we've signing tours together where we were at the same stores together and there were hundreds of people lined up to get your ornaments or our ornaments in that case situation it was right. your designs that we produced signed and it was so exciting to do those events together because we many it customers were, many fans were fans of both of us and also there were many that were only your fans or only my fans but we all got to mingle together and just had a great time. That was really a lot of fun. Those, those were fun. Those were really yeah. fun signings. Yeah. Uh. Well, that's all exciting. Um, our customers that are new to Mary Englebright, they can find you at maryinglebright.com. There is a mm -hmm. lot on your website. That is a great website. Everything we sell is on the website. So, right. Well, this is a great chance for us to sit and talk and introduce ourselves to uh, our respective. Uh, fans and collectors. So um, we're tentatively going to do this again, I think later in the year. We're in uh, September now. So um, first week of September, a little bit of few first 10 days of September we are. So, um, but I think we're going to do it again in either October or November, if I'm correct. So, Good. so we'll look well, forward to it. Yeah.
Great. Mary Engelbright, great to see you. It's good to see you, Mark. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, that was great. I loved talking with Mary. What a great thing to have with her. We go back many, many years, and it was a lot of fun. So let's do bobbles right now. Wait a minute. Before we do bobbles, for the full interview, for the full interview, you can see it right here. There it is, right here. Let's do it again, right here. <laughs> you can see the full interview of Mary, because there was a little bit of an edit on that. So you can see the full interview there later today or tonight. It will be up. Okay, now let's go do bobbles. Now, we did these bobbles once before on a show ooh, a while ago. So you may have, some of you may have these. They're boxes of 12. They're like $59.95 or something like that. Um, they're iridescent. I love these baubles. They're really great pieces. They're pretty, can we hear? They're, you know, they're, they're durable. I haven't broken any yet. So, um, but very pretty, teardrop, raindrop-like, exaggerated size. Very, very pretty. Great to add to your fairies, to your fairies' hands and things like that. Fairies or elves. Um, and speaking of elves, let's talk about the stocking stuffing elf. Different than the fairy the stocking stuffing elf. And we have two here again. And again, there's a, a Caucasian one and an African American one. So both got the same costumes. Both have the same fun, playful expressions, although different faces. And very, very pretty. So stocking stuffing elf, can we look? We are looking at the top one. Good. So what I like about this one is you've got this gold stocking going on, and look at the detail going on in that stocking. You've got three ribbons, you've got some green trim going on there, three jewels, two different sizes, teddy bear, a drum, a candy cane, and some other trimmings going on in there. And all of that picks up for a reason, because this guy is holding a swag in the tree here. But how happy is he? He's got a present on his uh, belt buckle there. He's got some bells, some bows, a lot going on in here. And he's got some great, a great shirt with some blue trim going on in there. A little bit of blue trim, but it's blue trim is going on in there. I love all that, how that goes so nicely with the Christmas colors of reds, greens, golds, and other magical furs Christmas colors. So it looks like he has a monocle there with his, the way the light's reflecting on his eyes there. Can we pull back just a little bit, John, and see his hat then that's going on? Look at that great hat that's going on on him. And the hat is actually being used to help secure him in the tree there. So you can use those parts of them as helpers for you with that. So we've got the large size stocking stuffer, the small size. I'm going to flip around. Before I do, the small one, notice, we put the uh, bobble in his hand. Just looks sweet in their hands. It's very magical is the only thing I can say. So I'm going to flip over to the other side and we'll look at the African-American one here because I'm now seeing things that I didn't see in the other one. And his festoon here, and they both have this, he's got a beaded gold deer in his um, buckle or festoon at his belt there, which is kind of exciting. Let's see here. I'm going to pull him this way a little bit. You know, that's one of the fun things of the Mark Roberts pieces is all the details. And you just get to see all sorts of details that are going on on them. There, we can see that deer a little bit better now. I mean, this is pretty cool here. Um, really neat going on there. We're good, John. We're good. Let's just move it over a little bit. There we go. There we go. Good. Stop, stop, stop. Lots of detail going on here. You got bells, diamonds, presents, lots of stuff going on on there. Same thing in his hat. Lots of fun stuff going on. He's got this great... Same stocking that is in his hand. Here's the little guy hiding out in here in the tree there. Look at him hiding out there. He is happy as can be. There's these sweet garlands going on here. These are pretty garlands. I like them. And he's just hiding out in the tree. So we kind of made like a little alcove in the tree and pulled, pulled some branches apart to create some space in there. And again, that creates some more interest into the tree and animation and movement like we're talking the ornaments in their hands, it just all goes together so nicely. So, stocking, stuffing, elf. This is the Af African-American one. 
And I think we're going to go look at a Santa next. So I'm going to jump in front over here. I'm going to grab my paperwork so I know what the heck I'm doing. And that is Santa's Little Friends. So why did we call it Santa's Little Friends? It's because of this great stocking that he's got in his hand. And look at the sweet little bunny in his stocking there. Is that too sweet? Sweet little furry bunny going on in there. And it's sitting in the stocking. So wh who would not want to get this as a present for Christmas time? How sweet. I know a lot of you want the Santa because it's got so much great detail. Laces, tassels, great details going on in here. This gold shirt is magical because he's got a pink and purplish embroidered lace going down the front with some beautiful white bows, some uh, iridescent jewels going on there, and then the hat. Look at the magic on this hat. I mean, look at the end piece. This is a glass ornament here. And then it's dressed up with all sorts of other details going on. But I mean, a lot of great details going on on that hat. And the wings that are going on on the hat up there, the details of the trimmings, the two different fabrics going on. You've got a gold at the very end and then a sculpted red velvet. I mean, this is just a great, great piece. So Santa's Little Friends, uh, a wonderful piece. And I got to go back because I was not paying attention. And I don't even know where it is. I've lost my signing pen. That's why. But the st stocking stuffing elves, both of them are, Renee's going to hand it to me. Great. Thank you. Threw it to me. Both of the stocking stuffing elves are going to be signed. So let me just do that so I can remind you of those. Brian probably already put it up on the screen. I'm just going to do a few of them right now. But they are all going to be signed, these pieces. But remember, the ones that are signed are at the marketplace only. So that's where you're going to get them signed at. All right. After that, we're coming to one of my favorite pieces. And that is these little deer that are under the tree. And how magical is this? Because the deer comes with the wreath festooned around its neck. So you've got this great poinsettia. You've got a variegated holly. You've got another variegated holly. There's two different types of variegated holly. Pine going on on here. I mean, this is just really too, too pretty. And then all this sequined fabric on the deer. It's magical. And then you've got the silver antlers going on here. And there are a, there's two of them, one with the head looking forward and the other one with it looking over its shoulder. This is priced as a set of two. Some of the marketplace retailers may have them individually. I don't know that for sure. But right, we're showing it as a set of two. And what you're getting are the two deers and the, I'll call them the necklaces, or that are festooned around their neck. How great is this under your tree, in front of your tree, at your entry, in your kitchen, up on the counter? They're about 32 inches tall, approximately. Oh, 34 to 36. OK, I was close. In the kitchen, up on the counter, if you have space, on a coffee table, uh, under the tree, I said that, or in front of the tree. Lots of great places in front of the fireplace. Lots of great places for these. These are really showstoppers. They are, there's a white fabric with a sequin that's iridescent throughout its whole body. But it looks like it's almost like a silver-like, but it's actually iridescent. But you can see as I move it around, I'm just kind of dragging it around. But wow, look at how it sparkles. I mean, this is, as you're seeing, I'm moving him a little bit. You're seeing the light dance off of this guy. It is just magical. And then as we pull back just a tad, we can see how rich that red velvet, or velvet, it's actually not velvet, it's red sparkling poinsettia, how it jumps against this deer. Really, really pretty. And then, how pretty is this? But on top of these deer are riding some elves. And I think this is called the present elf. He is the present elf. Guess what? And guess what? He gets signed. So let me do that right now so that I don't forget, because, you know, I forget these days. So these pieces are going to be signed also. 
I've told you 10 times, don't want you to forget, only at the marketplace. Love the present elf. His hat is a gift box. So what a fun thing is his hat is a gift box. So he, can, he pulls off his top and he's got a present for you. You know, it's, it's, it's too cool. So great piece, great details. The hat is probably the highlight of it. But when you see the happy face, I know that some of you, if I can reach over without breaking my own neck, are going to love that happy face. I know that some people in particular are very happy with that face. It's a real happy face. These elves are happy, happy, and happy. So great piece, very traditional colors. This has a lot of rich greens. I'm going to get the medium guy. Does he come off or did we secure him on? Ah, look at that. He, we easily posed him on there. And I'm going to sit him on my knee for a minute so we can look at his details and look at the colors on him because he is wonderful. What I love is this deep olive green on his velvet shirt. And then it's just highlighted by this sparkling green, which is a little bit more emerald. But the com combination somehow works. I think part of it is that transition of the, the gold jeweling that goes on there. And then there's another layer, and that just helps just set it all off. And that is this red um, fabric with the gold, like a canthus-like design going on on it. And then that wasn't enough. We had to sew on another layer of fabric. So you've got this gold layer of fabric that's sewn on the very bottom. You've then got the red. That's two. Then you've got another vest going on here with a double layer of fabric. So we've got four fabrics going on on here right now. So really a very complete piece. And maybe that's why he's so happy. Love that, you know, when you have them, you can turn their heads a little bit. And there he is. He's kind of looking at you like, hey, look at me. Check me out here. And then we're going to pull back just a little bit. And then we're going to be able to see the top of his hat going on here. There it is. So, and I'm going to turn his, I'm going to turn him around actually. I don't have to bend him. And let's look at the detail on the top of the hat. So he's got a great, lots of layers of ribbon. He's got a multi-layered, looks like two or three layers of ribbons, at least three. And then of course that really pretty ruby jewel that goes on in the top there. Really pretty, just kind of sets it all off. Very, very magical. And just one of my favorite little pieces here. So great piece. This guy will be signed. A lot of these signed pieces, there's not a lot of them left. Okay, so get them while you can, because there are not that many left. And with COVID, I'm not getting out and doing signings like I used to. So these are your chances to get them and w no matter where you live. Okay, I'm going to put him back on here, and then I'm going to go over to a very fun piece that we did. When I say we, Jong did it. It is a Lazy Susan. So am I going to be on this side here? Here it is here. Okay, so we got a Lazy Susan. And I don't even know where I got this. I don't know if I picked it up on Amazon or I picked it up at one of the stores when I was out shopping. And I thought, well, this is a great piece. But he then filled it with styrofoam and pine and added the, this is the African-American Bah Humbug Fairy. Two sizes, small and medium. And I mean, but wow, what a great way to take something that was relatively inexpensive. This, you know, it's a great little prop, but it was not that expensive. I want to say $30, $40 for, that's why I grabbed it. Um, for like a Lazy Susan, a two-layered Lazy Susan, and dress it up for the season, and then just pop the styrofoam out and use it during regular season for however you want. This guy has great sage green going on in him. I love sage green also. You think I only like blue. I like sage green also. And he's mostly green, actually. He's got a sage green going on in his pants. He's got a richer green in his shirt going on here. And then it's accented with golds and reds and the boots have, you know, bells with the grosgrain ribbon going on there and the red and the green and, the, you know, the bells on his feet, which are really pretty. And then when we go up to his hat, this is what I love about the Bah Humbug Fairy, which is, by the way, the official fairy of all husbands. But uh, the Bah Humbug Fairy has got his black velvet top hat, got a feather going on in his hat. But this is what finishes it off is the little Santa hat 
that is on top of his black velvet top hat. And what that signifies is while he's, yeah, bah humbug, he really is in the Christmas spirit. And he put on the Santa cap, Santa hat, even if he had to put it over his top hat, to signify that, yes, he loves the Christmas season. While we're looking at it, we knew that before he put that on, because look at this in his hat. Look at this jewel. I mean, this is huge. This looks like the Hope Diamond or something. Not your diamond, Hope. Another diamond. This is the Hope Diamond. It's, it's huge. I mean, it's huge. It's not the Hope Diamond, but uh, it's pretty big. So I love that. It's like a squarish, actually. It's like a square or octagon, little corner cut edges on it. Great piece. Two sizes. There's a small one, which we'll look at in a second. And that little small one has the Bah Humbug sign also. Are we seeing that? Yeah, we are right there. So there's the small guy. He's got the Bah Humbug sign. He's got a diamond going on in his hat. It's all the same details, just a little bit smaller. Great pieces to have. There's actually a fair amount of uh, African American pieces that I do. in Santas, fairies, and elves. So check them out on the marketplace. And wow. So we went through the whole show already. And there I am. So I got a few things. Q&A. I think we have a Q&A. I think we do. We do. I'm going to do two Q&As that I got. And one of them I kind of gave the answer away already. Are there going to be any signings this year? Any in-person signings this year? COVID says no for the second year in a row. So we're doing them through the different Facebook Lives. So we'll try to have something signed, some pieces signed for each show. I don't guarantee it, but we'll sure try whenever we can. So, but I miss going out and meeting you people face to face. I enjoy that a lot. So that will happen again. Will Mark be making Christmas cards again in the future? They were so beautiful. No plans right away, but Renee, are you going to grab me one of the Mary Engelbright cards? Cool, because we're, Renee's reading my mind and walking. Mary Engelbright does some great Christmas cards, and there's, some, there's two boxes of them also. These are postcards, but there's two boxes over there. But these are some postcards that she does, and so I'm going to ask you to go look at her website. Hard to see these. Let's see. There they are. And, but really great pieces. She's got great sayings on them, as we, as we talked about. These ones, Dopey Me, as you saw in the interview, I didn't even realize that these were part of the artwork that she did for the ornaments that she did that I produced. So, but she just sent these to me and I had just opened the box. But they are great Christmas cards that Mary does. And boxes, I'm, I'm going to guess 10. Nice card, nice inside. If we can get the good lighting, we're hard to get the lighting. What does it say? Celebrate the season. So. Last thing, tell me something that I don't already know. And that is, that is two things. We've started on Christmas 2022 already. So this is where I need your participation or would like it. It's in the comments section. I'll read them later tonight. But go ahead in the comments section, put what you'd want to see for next Christmas. I know some of you are going to put some stuff for fall for next year. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. It's cool. Um, we've actually got most of fall in process. It's not done, but it's in process. We've got Christmas just getting started. So we'll, I'm open to a suggestion, so sh share those comments with me, and that will be good. Last thing, September 30th is the next show, so it's coming up already quicker. And it's called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So it's going to be mostly Santa Clauses, but there'll be some fairies and elves some other surprises going on on it. And we have some other surprises coming for some other future shows. So it was fun. I'm glad we got to have a special guest today, Mary Englebright. And uh, be good. Stay on the naughty list. And uh, thank you. <laughs>